Okay, I'd like to expand a little bit on the previous video in which I showed you how to insert and modify keyframes in Blender. And I now want to look at keen sets. So keen sets for an animator can be really great because it allows you to specify exactly what channels you want to be keyed with a single click. So you may remember that in the previous video I showed you about inserting keyframes any number of different ways, but the quickest way is simply by pressing I in the viewport and then inserting the channel that you wish to set. And you can see that we have any number of channels. We've got combinations of channels, we've got visual, delta, or regular. And this is all fine and dandy for the most part. But if you have a very complex scene and you want to say, uh, break down all the keys into just characters or maybe character arms or however you want to break your keys down to keep them organized for yourself, you want to be able to have custom keys that is going to keyframe exactly the values you want without adding a ton of extra stuff. So if you go into the scene properties, you can add custom keying sets. And you should actually be aware that all of these are in fact actually keying sets that are just defined through Python, but then these allow us to set user defined ones. So if we first add in a new keen set, we can go ahead and name this keen set as our set or whatever. We can describe it if we want as a description it is awesome. Uh, we can then later, once we've got this all set up, we can export this to a file uh, for then applying to other scenes if we choose. And then we can also set whether we're doing only needed, visual keen, um, and whether or not the XYZ equals the RGB colors. So. So far, we haven't really done anything though, but create a blank empty keen set. And the next panel, the active keen sets, is where we actually begin to work with things. So for example, if we wanted to just set a keen set for location, or maybe only X location, and maybe X rotation, and ignore all other channels, including Y and Z for all things, then you know we we can't really do this just by pressing I. For one, you'll notice that we now have our active keys that says failed to insert a keyframe. Um, but we can't just do that normally because then suddenly uh, we have all of our other channels going in, and it's not very ideal, and it's not very uh, efficient to always right click and add a keyframe specifically for the channel that you want. We want to be able to do it very very quickly. So. What we need to do is just hit the plus sign and this will ask us basically to tell us or input what we want this to lock in. So in this case, we have our object, our cube. So we're gonna set it to object. We've got all of our other different types of data. Um, the ID block is going to be the object that we wanna use. In this case, it's going to be our cube. So you can also lock these down for specific objects. And then the data path is where it gets a little bit confusing because we don't know what the data path is. We just know that we want to grab the location here. So the simplest way to do this is simply to go over to the, to the value that you want, right click and choose add single to keen set, or simply press K while your mouse is over it. And you can see it's now added a location. It's done the ID block, it's set it to connected to the object that was selected and set the data path to the location. So we can actually remove this top one. And now if we hit I, it will automatically add a keyframe for our set. Here you can see it's named via the keen set and it's set to X location. Move it up, move it over, insert another keyframe with I. And again, it's keyframed only that one channel. So this is really helpful. Uh, we can then go ahead and specify this a little further. So let's add in, maybe just go over to the X scale and we're going to hit K to add that one to the set. And why don't we do X rotation? Okay, that one's all set. And now we can just move this around, rotate it, do whatever we want, hit I. It will insert those keys, go back here, do the same thing. And again, it's just done all of those keys specifically around those axes. So super, super helpful. Uh, we can go ahead and do a few more things with these. Uh, we can change how it groups the F-curves, uh, grouping in this sense. So right now it just groups them via the keen set name, or you can say don't group anything. And so if I just delete all these keyframes and then just add another one, uh, you can see it's got R set and then there's a few in there. Um, and then the rotation, the one that I disabled the grouping on is no longer included in that group. And so it's just at the object action level in this case. Uh, I'll put this back, or we can go to a named group and just say, this is our group. And now if I hit I, or let's 
move this over, rotate, hit I. Then uh, it normally would give us, uh, oh, I believe the reason that it hasn't given us this key set is because we already have our group defined. And so as far as Blender's concerned, this is how our group needs to act, and it's not checking this each time. So if we just select this channel, hit X, we can delete it, and then hit I again, and then it will insert it into that group. So then you can group these any way you want. So you could have rotation, location, scale, uh, whatever you wanted to do on those specifically. We then have, you know, whether we're keyframing only needed, visual keying, etc., etc. So that's it for keying sets. Uh, pretty handy for really kind of locking down exactly what you want to keyframe in your scene or on your objects. Uh, just to recap real quick, you can add specific keying sets just by adding a new one here. Uh, you can then choose the active, basically the channels that are going to be affected within that keying set. And again, the easiest way to do these is to simply find the value that you want, hit K while it's over it, and it will then add that value to it. If you go in and uh, go over to the same value and hit Alt K, you will remove it from that keying set. You can also, by the way, see what the index is here is the index for that value. So in this case, location refers to our location, obviously, and then the index refers to which X, Y, or Z it's using. So if we set this to two and then keyframe this, that should set it along the Z location, which it does. Uh, again, you can remove these very easily just with plus or minus keys, and you can do this for any value. So you have all of your values are, are you know, delta transforms, regular transforms. If you have any uh, shaders or anything like that, or if you're using, say, a modifier, such as the, we'll just grab uh, the smooth modifier and maybe put it below a subdivision surface modifier. If I can find that, here it is. Move that up. You could go ahead and keyframe the factor or add this to the keying set. So keyframe that and see if we go back over to the keying sets now. This has been modified, so modifiers, smooth iterations. And now every time I go over here, if I then change my, my iterations, hit I, it will insert a keyframe for that as well. So those are keying sets, pretty handy, pretty cool, pretty easy to set up once you get the hang of it and can really speed up and optimize your workflow if you take the time to put them together.